the graveyard, the place where the aircraft meet the end of the line. But have you ever seen what's inside those gates? Well, neither have I. And if you've wondered, join me for this video. Do you ever wonder what happens at airports? If so, this series is for you. In this series, we will go to airports behind the scenes all over the world. Welcome to Inside Airports. Welcome to Inside Airports, Episode 3, Rana Pinal County Air Park. Let's go behind the scenes as we check it out. But first, some history, because history is fun. First constructed in 1942 under the Dell Webb Construction Company, in March of 1943, it was designated the Marana Army Airfield. In 1945, the Army closed the airfield as it was seen as no longer necessary after the ending of World War II. Three years after the closing, Pinal County, Arizona took ownership and responsibility. In 1951, Pinal County began leasing properties on the airport until later of that year, until a company called DAR Aviation took it over to use for the United States Air Force and NATO personnel training. By 1957, DAR Aviation had officially left the property, and Pinal County once again began leasing property on the airport. One of the airport clients, known as Pfizer Aviation, converted and upgraded military aircraft for specific missions. In 1975, Marana Air Park Incorporated, as it was known, began leasing with Evergreen helicopters, which further tied their relationship with Evergreen International Airlines in later years. Evergreen, by the way, would go on to shape the industry today, as they took some of their former aircraft out of storage, they designated them for aerial firefighting as they developed the Super Tanker 747. They later took 747-400s and converted them to Super Tankers. In fact, the design was so successful, Boeing later adopted this and it was used for years until 2021. Evergreen was based in McMinnville, Oregon, and interestingly enough, they had a museum there. They even turned an old 747 into an outdoor water slide, and their museum is home to the Spruce Goose, as it's also known. My friend Paul Stewart recently made a video going around there, and I'll link it above. In 1982, the Evergreen Air Center opened a base for aircraft maintenance operations. In 2011, Evergreen International Aviation sold its maintenance facilities. In 2012, it was renamed Marana Airspace Solutions, a name of which it still holds on to today. During the pandemic slowdown of 2020, Pinal Air Park thrived as it stored more than four times as many aircraft as before. This was, of course, due to decreased airline demand. As of today, things are a lot better, but they're still not back to pre-COVID. As a lot of things have improved, there are still many aircraft stored, waiting to go back into commercial service. Pinal County, by the way, also manages the San Manuel Airport. This is a general aviation airport about 60 miles from Marana. But that's enough history, let's get to the planes. Airside, the airport became even more impressive, with these Northwest Airlines 747 freighters stored here. You can see by the picture, just how large they are. This, by the way, was a former ANA 747SR, which was a very special aircraft. Just like today, Japanese airlines using wide bodies on domestic services is nothing new. Because of its size and population spread over multiple islands, this all began with the 747SR. A specific lengthened version of the 100 variant, sold only to Japanese airlines, 
that being J-A-L-N-A-N-A. -N -A. Of these, only 50 or so were built, and 49 would go on to have a very impressive lifespan. It was a very rare jet to see. Two of these jets would be sold to NASA to go on and have a very special job. They were converted, modified, and turned into the SCA, or Shuttle Carrier Aircraft, that carried the Space Shuttle program. These jets also had an impressive safety record for their size, except for one Japan Airlines version flying from Tokyo to Osaka in August of 1985. It would go on to lose its rudder, and sadly be the only fatal crash of the variant. This being said, I was so lucky to see an SR variant of ANA, and not just one, I saw two of them. Now moving on to Northwest Airlines, I saw a number of 747 freighters and converted freighters of Northwest that they operated throughout the years. These first began under the brand of Northwest Orient Cargo, of both 747 freighters and side cargo door converted freighters. These had such a beautiful paint scheme, or livery as it's known, with this shiny polished metal, similar to what American Airlines did. In 1995, the livery was updated again to what we see today, although with an impending merger with Delta Airlines on the horizon, and bankruptcy filings coming in, very few 747 freighters of Northwest received the final livery shown here. Speaking of passenger 747s, all of Northwest's 747-400s at the time were converted to Delta Airlines, and the very last one flew from LAX on September 5th, 2017 to, well, Detroit. What a great airport that is! In 2019, the last Delta 747-400 landed at Pinal Air Park, marking the end of flying the plane as it entered retirement permanently. That is, except for one very special Boeing 747-400. The very first 747-400 ever built and delivered at the time to Northwest Airlines. This aircraft was very interesting in its long history, and it was sent to Atlanta, Georgia to meet the best fate for any airplane, converted into a museum exhibit. My friend Jeb Brooks made an excellent video touring this plane and seeing more of what's down there. I highly recommend it. Next up was this TWA 747-100, built in July of 1972. This airplane was very old and fascinating. There's also a really great video about TWA's bankruptcy and how it all happened, linked in the upper right. This aircraft was seen wearing multiple liveries, starting with its first, and then its next livery in the 80s, its third livery in the 1990s. I've also included a very good picture showing all three liveries so far side to side. And finally, its last livery seen today from the mid-2000s before TWA's subsequent insolvency. Which livery is your favorite? My favorite has to be the second in the 80s. Also, if you're a fan of TWA, check out my video staying in the former terminal which is now a hotel at JFK, linked in the upper right. I've had so much fun over the past few days exploring Arizona, seeing all the mountains and the canyons and all that, and it's just been really, really fun. And I only wish I had an aviation themed shirt to kind of go along with like the mountains in the desert. Oh wait, I do. Thanks to pilotquarters.com, I'm able to have a shirt for almost any need or occasion. This shirt I'm wearing specifically is called Reno and High Desert Shirt, but they make lots of other shirts for any occasion or need. If you go to pilotquarters.com and use discount code CALEB15, all one word, C is in CALEB15, you're able to get 15% off this already great deal. Thanks, guys. On my way out, I also saw a Virgin Atlantic 747. So cool, but also so sad. Well, guys, that's going to be it for me in this video. I hope you enjoyed. And to the people who helped make this video possible, thank you so much. You know who you are. And as always, until the next time, wishing you blue skies and tailwinds.